Hi everyone, welcome back to the All Indian Attestation class. In this class of specific matter that requires special audit consideration, we'll be covering accounting estimate and objective of accounting estimate and we'll do some practice question also. So this is very important. Please pay due attention for this class because this is very critical and heavily tested in your examination. So now coming to the fifth one, accounting estimate. So this is a uh, slightly bigger topic and we'll be discussing more in detail. So again, still like we are nearby to the provisions and estimates, right? What all come, what all things comes in your mind when you hear about accounting estimates? The provisions, mm -hmm. guarantees. Mm -hmm. Transactions. Sorry, transaction. What transactions? So transaction, like any business transaction. Mm -hmm. Like what kind of business transaction? The provision for doubtful debts, provision mm -hmm. for warranties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pensions, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pension the mortality. Also an estimate. Because that the mortality, future expected life. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it can be a uh, bad debt, useful life of uh, non current assets is also useful. an estimate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Impairment. Useful life of fixed assets. Yes. That is impairment, also an estimate. Impairment will. Impairment, also. yeah. So depreciation and mm -hmm. provision for like. Maybe uh, pension benefits or uh, whatever, mm -hmm. gravity or uh, all the you know employee related uh, whatever the provisions mm -hmm. we make. Coming, mm -hmm. I don't really think impairment of assets is an estimate in itself. What I the real estimate there is actually the VAC rate or the discount rate that's used to calculate the um the the ultimate whatever the, whatever that's called okay value and use of the uh, asset or whatever yeah, it is and then. The right. other estimate there is the budgeting accuracy of the management, but I don't see how impairment of asset in itself and is in itself an estimate. Like impairment is very factual. Carrying value is lower than the whatever carrying mm -hmm. value. But how do how do you calculate that right. carrying how value is lower than? So so that's what I'm saying. No, the underlying underlying factors in cal that go in calculation like budgeting, which includes mm -hmm. revenue estimates or goes up and then. Discount mm -hmm. rates and etc. Those are the estimates. <laughs> Those are like you can say underlying assumptions for that okay. accounting. So discount estimate. rate also what we are using yes. is always like we have a figure, right? How yes. is that an estimate? I don't get say it. that again. So the estimate, like when we are calculating anything with the discount yes. rates or anything which we use, we are generally uh, using a particular rate, like mm -hmm. the market or the bond yield rate. So. Mm -hmm. That cannot be an estimate. We no, are that is also an estimate, like okay. why you have chosen that. Okay, but no, generally that is fixed, right? Like we no, 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 no. This, this is your best estimate, whether you are taking government security bond rate, whether you are taking bank rate, whether you are taking lending rate, whether you are taking like RRR, IRR. Okay. So okay. you can you have like a variety to choose. Okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in uh, like, uh, it would be an estimate or not, like this impairment part. I think it's, it's an assumption. A no, impairment, impairment is an estimate, estimate but right. underlying assumptions, which we are discussing, like discount rates and all those things, are underlying assumptions. Okay. And so, to so calculate more, that estimate, one more thing this provision for, uh, like, when we make for uh, obsolete and slow moving stock, like when uh -huh. we we're discussing. Mm -hmm. provisions for that in our financials as well yes. that can be an estimate as yeah well. that is an accounting estimate yes absolutely and uh, uh, you know like for that for example let's say inventory so you'll be performing inventory count and you are assessing like how much percentage of inventory is good how much percentage of inventory is not good those all are underlying assumptions to calculate those accounting estimates okay hmm. yeah anyone else would like to add Kashish, you are saying something. So, uh, we in financial instruments, you, we use fair value level one, level two. Mm -hmm. so yeah, fair those, are also, those are also yeah, estimates. Yeah. Yes. I was getting confused that is it an accounting policy change or not? That's a... <laughs> yeah. Cool. Anyone else would like to add? Rahul, Garvit, Gurmehar, 
Anjali, Vineet, Arjun. Okay, okay, let's keep those all things in mind and then let's try and understand more in detail about accounting estimate. Just keep in mind like provision for doubtful debt, provision for obsolete inventory, like uh, long-term employment benefit provision, provision for warranties, impairment loss, fair value measurement. So those all things, stock option plans, how to do the valuation of stock option plans, right? So keep those things in mind and let's try and understand what accounting estimates are. So accounting estimate is actually like measurement or recognition of an account disclosure transaction or event that generally involve subjective assumptions and measurement of uncertainty in the financial statement. So accounting estimates are generally being estimates, generally are the estimates which are being measured, which are being made to measure and recognize the respective financial statement, account balances, disclosure, and transaction or even. For example, like when you are doing like some acquisition, at that point of time, you'll be estimating how much goodwill this new business which you are acquiring might be generating. So that comes under the transaction or event, right? So there might be possibility, like we were discussing earlier about litigation claims or assessment. So in that case of scenario, you'll be estimating how much be the potential loss in future and that you'll be disclosing as a contingent liability, right? And for example, if you are calculating the impairment loss, so that is something you are accounting for. Hmm? So in accounting estimates are generally, first thing is it's management responsibility to do the respective estimates and we'll be validating whether the management has taken the correct estimate or not by testing the basic data and the assumption which management has taken, right? Primary responsibility for accounting estimate is always for, always be of management, right? That's clear? Yes, no? Sorry, I'm a little confused between mm -hmm. this assumption part and this uh, estimate part. When, when <laughs> no, how? How does estimate has been calculated based on certain assumption taken by the management? Like whatever data we have already mm -hmm. that we can actually, which is a factual uh, thing, mm -hmm. that cannot be an assumption. But we are no, using. No, for example, for example, let's say you have like receivable. Hmm? You have like receivable, you have created receivable aging and you consider respective percentage for the respective bracket. Let's say you have total receivable of uh, 1000. Uh, uh, one uh, hundred million dollar is your total receivable, hmm? out of which you have receivable due from last thirty day is fifty, uh, let's say sixty million dollar. Okay. Hmm? And you have a credit policy of thirty day for those uh, which is due less than thirty day, you will not, uh, you are not required to take any provision for that. Hmm? So then second bracket you have taken the receivable due from thirty one days to one eighty days. Okay. Right. For that, you consider, let's say, 1% of that will be not recovered. Okay. So from where this 1% has taken, it's your assumption based on the historical trend of the losses you are incurring. Right. right. And more than 180 days dues, you consider 5% as a provision for doubt. For that. Right. Mm -hmm. So those 1% and 5% which you have taken is the assumption on the factual data to calculate the provision. Okay. And the this can vary from industry to industry and company to company as well. Yes, because... yes, absolutely. And based on like historical data as well as like, uh, maybe like, let's say like uh, before signing up in the financial statement, you get to know like your major customer is gone bankrupt. So in that case, it's like you need to book the provision immediately for the okay. entire balance due or maybe like uh, re, uh, significant balance due from that, right? It, it's very dynamic. Oh. That's the reason these are specific audit consideration area, whereas an auditor, we need to give more attention because any small change in the percentage may have material impact on the overall financial statement when it comes to estimates, right? For example, like let's say for uh, uh, this long-term employment benefit provision, right? So you have taken, let's say, uh, 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 government bond rate for the discounting of long-term 
employment benefit to calculate the present value of the long term employment benefit payable right whereas you have to take the lending rate which is let's say have 1% different than the government bond rate that 1% may can may, may make a huge impact in the overall nrv hmm. or the present value of the uh, long term employment benefit provision right. so in that case of scenario what all assumption you have taken plays a significant role and that's the reason like as an auditor we need to pay uh, more professional skepticism more professional judgment and more uh, attention to those area where management judgments are being involved okay right as a measurement of some of the accounts depend on the outcome of future event or data about the past event cannot be accumulated in a timely cost effective manner thus management required to make estimate of the amount to account for in the books thus it is the responsibility of management keep in mind accounting estimates is being the responsibility primary responsibility of the management to make the reasonable estimate and include them in the financial statement some of the financial statement item cannot be measured precisely but can only be estimate like for example fair value measurement percentage of completion method of revenue impairment of asset compensation for stock option plan uh, future pension or warranty provisions right net realizable value for inventory or account receivable uh, probability of loss and related amount due for the litigation claim and assessment so in these case of scenario you cannot precisely calculate the amount so you need to make the estimate and all those estimates are generally based on certain assumption taken by the management hmm? so what is the objective of accounting estimate some of the accounting estimates are made for forecast the outcome of one or more future transaction events or condition like litigation claim and assessment like in future whether it will be winning the case or losing the case right the outcome is in future but currently we need to calculate the amount either to disclose or to account for right other accounting estimates such as fair value where the measurement objective is to express in terms of the value of the current transaction or financial statement item based on the prevalent condition at the measurement date like long term employment benefit or inventory valuation right so these are the objective of accounting estimate to estimate the future outcome or estimate of the current value uh, in which like future assets might be sold or future liability need to be settled hmm? the auditor objective when evaluating the accounting estimate is to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence so our main objective is to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence to provide a reasonable assurance to the to our opinion right so what reasonable assurance you need to take first is all material accounting estimates are being developed by the management second is accounting estimates are reasonable in the respective circumstances and the last one is accounting estimate are presented and disclosed in conformity with the respective applicable accounting principle or accounting framework so these three are the major objective when we are doing the audit of accounting estimates when planning the procedure to evaluate the accounting estimate auditor should consider an attitude of professional skepticism because here is the risk of management overriding of control and management judgment so professional skepticism plays a bigger role over here uh, in both terms subjectivity as well as objective of the factors so here you need to wear the sick hat of professional skepticism when you are testing the management accounting estimates generally if you have seen in audit team like experienced person experienced team member is being involved in testing the accounting estimate because they are generally complex accounting matter make sense so far so good now what all things you need to do we understand what is accounting estimate we understand the objective of auditor we understand what all things as an auditor we need to carry in our mind when we are testing the accounting estimate now comes to the testing part 
what all audit procedure you need to perform to test the accounting estimate. Right? Any doubt so far? Okay. First thing is identify the circumstances that require accounting estimate by inquiry with the management, reading minutes of the meeting, contract, or regulatory update. So, how do you get to know? Like management is estimating provision for inventory, provision for warranty, provision for doubtful debt, impairment loss. So this you come to know by looking at the financial statement, initial inquiry with the management, reading the minutes of the meetings, contracts, any regulatory update, right? From those only, you'll be in a position to identify those circumstances which required any accounting estimate. Second is evaluate the degree of estimation and uncertainty associated with the accounting estimate. So first you need to identify the area where accounting estimates are involved. Second important thing is what is the degree of the estimation involved? Identify the degree of the estimation involved. How do you identify? First, estimation uncertainty is susceptibility of the accounting estimate to inherent lack of the person in its measurement. The auditor should determine whether accounting estimate with high uh, accounting estimate with high estimation uncertainty give rise to the significant risk. So here you will be doing the risk assessment and understanding whether the person who is dealing with the accounting estimate is competent to deal with that or not, right? And that estimate is, does it uh, require a high degree of uncertainty which may result into a significant risk? The auditor should consider historical experience like how was your experience dealing with similar situation in previous year or maybe the previous clients or maybe other clients in the entity in making the past estimate as well as auditor experience in the industry. Hmm? Third is assess the management written policy and practice regarding the development and use of estimate. So for example, like provision for doubtful debt. What is the company policy for creation of the provision? Provision for warranty. What is the company policy? How do they calculate? So it's being the responsibility of the auditor to understand the management policy. That may be like their process narrative, standard operating procedure, desk procedure, or maybe any flow chart, right? That is something you need to evaluate and understand in detail what is the management policy for identification and calculation of the accounting estimate. After that, ensure that the accounting estimates are properly accounted for and disclosed in conformity with the gap and applied consistently. So two things you need to keep in mind, whether the accounting policy which management has taken is in conformity with the gap or it should not be like different than the gap and does it apply consistently period over period or not. If there is a change in method from prior period in current circumstances, in that case, you need to evaluate whether the change is in line with the gap and you need to give appropriate disclosure for the change and impact of the change. Hmm? Verify all the material estimate have been developed. Determine the accounting estimates are reasonable. In evaluating the reasonableness, the auditor should apply professional skepticism and focus on the significant assumption, which include first is significant to estimate, like for example, uh, provision for warranty. Hmm? Provision for warranty, how do you calculate like how much percentage of your sales would be warranty? So there might be certain percentage as a thumb rule management might have taken. And maybe for different geographic, they have taken different rate. And maybe for different segment, they might have taken different rates. How do they have calculated those rates? Right? So first need to understand the significance of that estimate. Second important thing is sensitivity to variation. If that percentage change half percent plus, half percent minus, how much it will be impacting to the overall balance. That sensitivity analysis is mandatory disclosure in the financial statement when you are testing the significant accounting estimate. Hmm? Third is deviation from historical pattern. If there is a change, in the significant estimate which they have taken earlier year to the current year. Then you need to understand and evaluate whether the change is appropriate or not 
and after that calculate the impact of that change. Hmm? Fourth is based on unobservable data. If there is any estimation taken based on unobservable data, then you need to disclose that. Fifth is depend on the entity intent and ability to carry out specific course of action. And lastly, the subjectivity and susceptibility to the misstatement or management biasness. These are all things you need to keep in mind and you need to apply professional skepticism when you are testing those areas in the accounting estimate. And in lastly, in when you are evaluating the completeness of accounting estimate, an auditor should consider the circumstances of the industry and industry in which you, the company operate, methods of conducting the business, new accounting pronouncement, if any, and other external factors. So these all things you need to keep in mind when you are testing the estimates. Hmm? Now coming the, on testing the reasonable of, reasonableness of the assumptions in those estimates. In evaluating the reasonableness of the estimate, the auditor must first obtain an understanding how the management has developed those estimates. Hmm? The auditor would then perform one or the combination of the following audit procedures. So these are audit procedures which you need to perform. Either you can perform individually or in a combination of any of these procedures. First is understand whether the method used by the company is in conformity with the framework. That means is in conformity with the GAP or IFRS, whatever the company is using and is appropriate based on the auditor understanding of the company. If the company has changed its method for determining the, then determine the reason for change and evaluate the appropriateness of the change as well. Second test you need to do, test the accuracy and completeness of the company produced data. So in chapter three, we discuss about information produced by the entity IP. So here also, whatever the information that company is considering to calculate those estimate, you need to test the completeness, accuracy and reliability and relevance of the data, which is being considered as the base for the calculation of those respective estimate. Hmm? Third is evaluate the reasonableness of the significant assumption including including based on the economic condition company objective historical experience and the entity's ability to carry out the particular action so here whatever the assumption that management has taken so you need to test those assumptions whether those assumptions are appropriate because the ultimate number of the provision or estimate is coming out is based on two things one is the key data, base data, and second, the estimates, or the second you can say, assumption that management has taken to calculate those estimate on the base data. So two things you need to test properly. One is the base data, accuracy, completeness, reliability, and relevance of the base data, and the appropriateness of the assumption that management has taken to calculate the estimate on the base data, right? For critical accounting estimate, the auditor should obtain an understanding of how management analyze the sensitivity to change its significant assumption. So here again, what it's reiterating, the significance on the sensitivity of the assumption. If there is half a percentage up, then what will be the ultimate amount? And if there is a half a percentage less, then what will be the ultimate amount? Is that variation is within the materiality level which you have considered or not. That is the sensitivity analysis you need to perform. And nowadays, it is a mandatory disclosure required for the significant accounting estimate. Wherever you have identified any estimate as a significant accounting estimate, you need to make sure in the disclosure part, in the notes to accounts for that respective account balance, you need to give the sensitivity analysis as well. Hmm? Next one is compare an independently developed estimate to the management estimate. Here, you can develop your own independent estimate and compare with the management estimate and see 
if their variation is material or not material. If it is not material, then you can ignore it. If it is material, then you need to investigate the reason. Hmm? Last is evaluate the subsequent event and transition occurring prior to the date of report for comparison purposes. Right? Two things you need to keep in mind for accounting estimate. No one accounting estimate can be considered accurate with certainty. That is the reason they are estimated. Right? Accounting estimates are estimated number, not the accurate number. This is one key thing you need to keep in mind. Second key thing is when an auditor determines that the amount of an accounting estimate included in financial statement is unreasonable or was not determined in conformity with the requirement of applicable reporting framework, then the auditor should treat the difference as a misstatement. If the difference is material to the financial statement, then you can qualify the report. And if it has pervasive income uh, impact, then you can go with the adverse report. Make sense? How do you conclude on accounting estimate? Yes, sir. Any, any doubt here? What is accounting estimate? What is the objective of accounting estimate? What are audit procedure we need to perform? And how do we conclude on accounting estimates? Yes, no? No, sir. So far, so good? Yes, sir. Okay, let's do some question here. Okay, okay. Before question, we have two examples here. So one is accounting estimate of allowance for doubtful debts. Hmm? So here is an example. To ensure the receivable are recorded at net realizable value, it is required to estimate the allowance for doubtful account. The auditor may perform the following procedure to evaluate the reasonableness of the estimate. So here uh, we are discussing in detail about what all things you need to do when you are testing the provision for doubtful debt. First is determine the approach taken to estimate the allowance, either balance approach or sales approach, right? So there might be possible that company take 1% of the credit sale as a provision for doubtful debt, or there might be possibility they can take percentage of old balances of the receivable or the percentage of account receivable balance. So first thing you need to understand what is the basis that management take. Make sense as per their policy. How do you test like uh, provision for doubtful debts? Counting estimate. First, understand the management policy, what percentage and what base they consider. Second is discuss the percentage used in the analysis and the relevant factor that must be considered in estimation process by the management. So you'll be discussing that with the management, like what percentage they have taken and how they have derived to that respective amount. Third thing, what you will be doing, obtaining the information about the sales or receivable, which is being considered as a base from the trial balance. And then you might be taking like receivable report, aging report at the year end to determine the respective estimate. Then you will be doing the re-performance or recalculation of the estimate and comparing that re-performed amount or recalculated amount with the amount calculated by the management, right? And if there is any difference, then you'll be investigating that difference with the management. Hmm? What other things you'll be doing? Obtaining the information regarding the amount written off during the year. You know, what provision you are taking? For example, you have $1 million, $100 million account receivable balance and you have taken 1% of the account receivable balance as a provision for doubtful debt, right? Whereas your actual doubtful debt is $5 million in a year. So what 1% of the AR balance is sufficient to consider as a provision for doubtful debt? Yes or no? So can you repeat the question? Like I, I did not get it. <laughs> yeah, for example, you have $100 million account receivable balance and as per accounting policy, you consider 1% of the account receivable balance as a provision for doubtful debt. That means $1 million, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas in the current year, your actual bed debt expense is $5 million. 
So will you be comfortable creating one million dollar as a provision? No, so we need to set off that bad debt expense first from that, you know, provision. Then make a then made a provision. So provisions were made for bad debt. So we will when the bad debt has actually occurred. So we will set off that and then make a provision in that amount. Mm -hmm. So no, my I think you might have not understood okay. my question. Let me explain it. Can you all see my whiteboard? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's say this is financial year twenty. This is financial year twenty one. Mm -hmm. So here you have account receivable, which is fifty million dollar, and here you have let's say is hundred million dollar. Mm -hmm. So previous year provision, you have created let's say one million dollar. And this year, let's say you have created two million dollar provision. Hmm? Your net AR is coming. How much? Forty nine and ninety eight. This management has done. Hmm? And now, if you see here, you have account receivable, account receivable, right? So opening balance of let's say this is for. Financial year twenty one. How much is the opening balance of account receivable? Fifty million. Fifty million dollars. So Fifty million dollar is the opening balance, right? And current year, let's say you have made this is let's say opening. Then current year you have made a credit sale of let's say five hundred million dollar. Hmm? And collection you have made. Collection you have made, let's say, is five fifty, and you have closing balance, let's say, hundred here. Mm, collection, let's say, you have made how much is it? Four fifty, okay. or let's say, four forty five million, and you have bad debts. Five million dollars expenses. Right, that's how your closing balance is ten million dollar. So now your actual bed debts is five million dollar. Are you comfortable creating two million dollar provision, or will you challenge? This is what my question is. Hope you understand the question now. Yeah, no, we can challenge that uh, hmm? because we are uh, last year the bad debts actually were like we made a provision of one million, and but the bad debts were like huge. It was five hmm. million. Hmm. Now this year also we are taking the same approach and we have just uh, you know taken the same percentage and created a two million uh, uh, provision which is not appropriate. We should consider how much were the bad debts last uh, in this year and accordingly we need to revise this estimate of provisions actually. Yeah. How about others? Did you all understand question? Yes, sir. Hmm. Sanchi. Yes, sir. Gurmeher. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. So now let's come back to the notes yes, part. So here uh, we were, yeah. So in this point, uh, obtain information regarding the return off during the current year and adequacy of the previous year allowance balance. Historically, return off. Can uh, can also be reviewed as these are typically uh, based on the percentage used on the estimate allowance. Based on the information, the auditor can begin to assess whether the balance is too low or too high. Right? Uh, I think we were yeah. So here, for example, previous year you have taken a provision on certain percentage, whereas the actual bed debts expense are coming more. In that case of scenario, you need to Assess whether the provision taken in current year is appropriate or not. If the <coughs> provision for current year is not appropriate, then you can request the management to revise the provision. 
right? Yes. And if they do not revise, then you can consider that as a misstatement. And you need to evaluate whether that misstatement is material to the overall financial statement. If answer is yes, then you can go for a qualified opinion. If it is not, then you can ignore it and park in the summary of unadjusted differences. Right? Next is ensure that allowance uh, account in the balance sheet is tied to the expense, right? So whatever is like in the provision for doubtful debt account, so opening balance would be provision and then current year provision will be addition and the current year bed debt expense would be there in the credit side. So those expense should be tied to your income statement expense account. Make sense? Yes, sir. Hmm. The auditor should also evaluate whether the difference between the reported estimate and the best estimate supported by the audit evidence indicate possible management biasness. So here, like you need to, uh, uh, you need to be more professional skepticism when you are testing the uh, appropriateness of the provision for doubtful debt, whether the management biasness is being involved or not. So when you are, so this is an example for uh, accounting estimate while testing the provision for doubtful debt. What all things as an auditor will be keeping in mind? Make sense? How do you test provision for doubtful debt? Yes, sir. Okay. So next one is fair value measurement and disclosure testing. So another example. So in US GAAP, do not prescribe any method for measuring the fair value. However, it expressed the preference to be used. First is observable market price. And second, in absence of observable market price, you can use valuation method with the best information available in the circumstances, which can be uh, like black Scholl model or uh, unit price model or different, uh, you can say model has been given for the valuation of the fair valuation, right? So those things you can use uh, and uh, in, in absence of observable market price. But wherever observable market price is available, uh, it's always preferred to use observable market price. Market price. Right? So that's from the accounting side, what background is of like fair value measurement. Uh, but what all things you need to do as an auditor to test the fair value measurement. To obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence to provide reasonable assurance that the fair value measurement and disclosure are in conformity with the applicable reporting framework, the auditor should perform the following audit procedure. First one is auditor should obtain an understanding of the entity process of determining fair value measurement, disclosure and the relevant control sufficient to develop the effective audit approach. So first thing, whenever you perform the audit of any respective area, what do you do? You understand the management process, maybe by reading process narrative, standard operating procedure, desk procedure, or by performing inquiry with the management. So same thing you need to apply here. First, you need to understand the overall process <coughs> and flow of transaction. Second thing is auditor should evaluate whether the fair value measurement and disclosure and financial statement are in conformity with the applicable reporting framework or not. So whenever you are testing any estimate, what is more important here is to ensure that estimate which management has taken and the method which management has taken is in conformity with the reporting framework or not, as per US GAAP or not, as per IFRS or not, right? First is understanding the process. Second is ensuring the methods which management has taken is in line with the gap or not. Third is when the entity use valuation method, auditor should consider first management has sufficiently evaluated and appropriately applied the criteria, if any provided in the financial reporting framework to support the selected method, like LIFO method, FIFO method, weighted average method, fair value method, black spot method, they all are being kind of approved method, state line method, return down value method, they all are approved method as per the accounting standard, right? Whether the management has taken those approved method or not. Second is the valuation method is appropriate in the circumstances given the nature of 
item being valued for example if you are valuing uh, let's say uh, fixed assets hmm? uh, if you are uh, valuing the fixed assets whether you need to whether you should use amortization method or depreciation method if it is an intangible asset then you should be using amortization method if it is a tangible asset you might be using depreciation method right so the valuation method which is being required to be used for the particular item is that method has been used or the different method has been used by the management makes sense <coughs> yes sir third is valuation method is appropriate in relation to the business industry and environment for example uh, you have purchased laptop or computers or printer right generally in industry we depreciate computers and equipment in 3 year period right whether you are also depreciating in 3 year period or you are depreciating in 5 year period 4 year period or 2 year period if it is different than the industry norm then understand the reason of the difference makes sense yes, yes no hmm? yes yes fourth thing is auditor should consider to engage specialist when circumstances required for example like company is into let's say uh oil and gas company right here for you it is difficult to measure how much oil is being available in the rig you might be involving the specialist like certified engineers who would be doing the valuation or you will be helping you in calculating the possible oil or gas from that respective rig then you will be doing a mathematical calculation by applying the rates right so wherever the circumstances required to involve specialist it is better to use specialist of that respective area and test the assumption taken by those specialists for the estimation purpose make sense fifth is auditor procedure very significantly because of the wide range of possible fair value measurement and varying the level of the risk of material misstatement so <coughs> <coughs> sorry so your level of audit procedure is also depend on the level of risk if the risk is low for example it's a routine estimation hmm? then probably you might not be doing that much rigorous level of nature time mean extent of the audit procedure if the risk is high your level of procedure might be extra if the fraud risk is there then your level of procedure would be much more extra right auditors should evaluate management assumption are reasonable and consistent with the market information available fair value measurement was determined used an appropriate model like black scholl model fair value model comparable model right respective valuation model management used the relevant information that is reasonably available at the time then sensitivity analysis which you have discussed in detail also auditor should evaluate that that the assumption on fair value measurement are based on the realistic and consistent with the general economic condition market information plan of the entity assumptions made in the prior year past experience of the auditor other matters and risk associated with the cash flow <clears throat> ninth point is if the entity has not appropriately disclosed fair value required by the gap the auditor should evaluate whether the financial statement are materially misstated if the financial statement are material misstated then it's on auditor to modify it qualify it or do the adverse opinion hmm? tenth point is obtaining a written representation this is also mandatory especially for the significant accounting estimates area it's mandatory to take the specific written representation from the management in the management representation letter what all things you will be taking representation from management first one is reasonableness of the significant assumption taken by the management hmm? second is intent and ability to carry out those specific course of action which management has confirmed 
appropriateness and consistencies of the method used, completeness and adequacy of the disclosure made, and the subsequent event, if any, require any adjustment in those estimates. <clears throat> Lastly, communicate to those charged with governance about the process used by the management in formulating particular sensitive assumptions about the process used in the used by the management. Right? Makes sense? Fair value measurement. So these are two examples I thought might be relevant and you might be uh, got a lot of testing around these two examples in your exams as well. Any doubt here? Yes, no, crystal ball there. So yes. far, so good? Yes, yep. sir. Yes, sir. Okay, let's do two questions, two, three questions, two questions. Question one. <clears throat> During the performance of an audit, the auditor discover that accounting estimate fair value using a valuation method when there is no observable input available. So call of the question is when there is no observable input available. Hence the auditor should consider which of the following to ascertain if the entity's method of measurement is appropriate. So when you do not have observable input, which method is more appropriate? First is withdrawing from the engagement. Second is evaluate whether the valuation is appropriate in circumstances given the nature of the item being evaluated. Issue the scope limitation in the audit report. Issue the modification in audit report. What are you going to do? Will you do modification, disclaimer, or withdrawal, or you are going with the evaluation? So evaluation, because if observable market is most preferred one. If it's not uh, available, then we, we will evaluate the second. Right. Anyone have any different opinion or thought? Yeah. Gurmi no, the second is clear. Um, second is clear. Yeah. Okay. So second question. What should an auditor do if audit methods highlight that an accounting estimate is not reasonable? What should an auditor do if accounting estimates are identified as not reasonable? One is withdraw from the engagement. Second is treat the difference between accounting estimate and closest reasonable estimate determined by the auditor as a known misstatement. Third is treat the difference between accounting estimate and closest reasonable estimate determined by the auditor as a likely misstatement. And then for this, qualify the audit report. What course of action that auditor should take? Third, third, sir. Why so qualify to qualify to sir, kisi bhi angle se nahi hai. Qualify to sir karein nahi hai. The example provision one, which we were discussing. So uh, whatever there is a difference, whenever there is a difference, we cannot say that it is a known misstatement. Hmm. It would be a likely misstatement, hmm. yeah, because it can be appropriate, and we. Uh, Treat that as a likely misstatement and not necessarily withdraw from the engagement or, you know, qualify the audit report on the face of it. We can tell it as a misstatement and then need to check whether it's pervasive or like it's in a particular account balance. Material or, or not as well. Yes, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. then Good. How about others? So Do then we will also, also report, like, we will also mention all the things in the audit report as well. Like there is a likely misstatement and... We will mention all the points. No, if it is material, it. if it is material to the financial statement, then only you do qualification. <clears throat> but if it is not material, then you do not do any qualification. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, Arjun, Garvit, Ranjali. Sir, known misstatement. What example? Uh, so there are two type of misstatement. One is known misstatement. The second is likely misstatement. Known misstatements are factual misstatement. Like for example, uh, prepaid expenses, a company has missed to book the prepaid expenses. So that is a known misstatement, right? Whereas likely misstatement where estimation, management has taken different estimation and auditor has taken different estimation. So those are like uh, degree of uncertainty is meaning. 
Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm.